everybody, this is Andrew, also known as Nature Man. Today's video, we're going to be talking about the Gymnoclitus dioica, also known as the Kentucky Coffee Tree. Uh, I am at Flowing Well Park in Carmel, Indiana, USDA zone, 5B, borderline 6A. Um, I always just say 5B, is you never know, it takes one cold winter, it takes one abnormally cold blast. So I'll be so zone 6 because of climate change, I'm like, yeah, I'm not ready to do that yet. I believe climate change can cause more volatile winters. But be it that as it may, we are going to be talking about the Kentucky coffee tree. Um, Kentucky coffee tree has very limited ways of seed dispersal. It is uh, thought that thousands of years ago, woolly mammoths and other large such mammals that are now extinct would eat the pods and spread them. Um, but now there's very limited ways for them to spread because there aren't any animals really that eat them that are alive today. So they have to, that's why they're very hard to find in the wild. They're not rare or endangered. Where they're found, they're very common, but they're not very, as I say, they're not very widespread, very common throughout the forest. But where they are found, they grow very well. Uh, definitely a native here to Indiana, central Indiana, native to the Eastern US. This is a mature K uh, Kentucky coffee tree. See by the bark. Uh, kind of when it's young, its bark is a lot more flaky, like a lot. I'm not even sure if I can kind of zoom in and you can kind of really tell. It's kind of hard with my phone, um, but it's a lot more kind of flaky and barky as it's younger, which kind of adds more ornamental texture in my opinion. The leaves are very fine and small, almost like a locust, like a honey locust or a black locust tree, which is why people love them in the landscape because they have such tiny leaves. You don't have to worry about giant leaves littering everywhere causing dense shade. Uh, and on top of that, they're extremely drought tolerant. They can tolerate pretty moist soil uh, very well, but they're also super drought tolerant. They can grow in extreme dry sites and even almost arid soils, which is why they're actually landscaped out west. Um, I've seen them landscaped out in Colorado before, out in Kansas, where it's very dry. Kind of like oak trees and um, elm trees are also very drought tolerant. Um, Kentucky coffee tree would also fit that category. So how do the seeds spread, you may ask? Lo and behold, there is a creek right here. The, uh, I believe this is the Cool Creek, I believe. Um, and obviously, what happens is a tree, because there aren't really any animals that eat them that are alive today, they grow near the creek, they, they can disperse, and they can spread for, they, the seeds can float for miles until they're washed upon shore. And they're found growing right along the creek. I go inland, you know, two, three hundred feet, there's not a single Kentucky coffee tree anywhere away from this creek. That's how somewhat rare they are. I mean, like I said, they're not rare in, an F in a species, but they're rare in, in abundance, I guess you could say. Um, you'll find them where the seeds are easy dispersed, easily dispersed. Um, and that's creeks is a very fine, a good area where you're gonna find Kentucky coffee trees around rivers, creeks, or where maybe there's a downslope and seeds can easily spread down a hill or whatnot, what have you. And there's actually quite a few of them kind of dispersed back here. Um, but yeah, that's, who knows, it may have decades ago when this tree germinated, who knows, like 50, 75 years ago, however old the tree is, there was a tree probably two or three miles down, or several miles down, who knows, who knows where, maybe it came from the Wabash, I don't know, I couldn't tell you. Came down this creek, high flood waters, and high flood waters disperse the seeds back as you know you know this this creek rises and right now it's very low because we had a very dry summer but you know during extreme rainy seasons you know, water can come all the way up here in fact ironically you see this little sapling that's a kentucky coffee tree i can tell by the foliage and it's literally growing right on the freaking edge of the cliff like but they're also very drought tolerant because all that water is going to wash away so despite it growing right next to the creek that's very dry soil because all the water washes away from it. But when it floods, this gets soaking, it stands in water, but when it's low like this, it's dry, which is why people love this tree. It's very, very versatile, or versatile, depending on how you pronounce it. But yeah, there's this Kentucky coffee tree sap and going on bone dry soil, or at least right now, during the uh, abnormally dry summer. We've had even a drought for a period. There's another one. It's not doing too well. It's probably a little fungus infecting leaves, but the tree will be fine, just from the drought. <laughs> There's a young tree right there. Now there's also hackberry trees, which the bark can also look very similar. But on a hackberry, they're significantly rugged and grooves. I mean, it's very different. It's more defined on a uh, Kentucky coffee 
while on a hackberry. The, the hackberries stand out like a sore thumb. You, if you know the two trees, you can't mistake them. It's impossible. Uh, there's also poison ivy climbing up this tree, so I'm not going to touch that. But yeah, <laughs> it just goes to show where the seeds disperse and germinate. And here's a big one right here. I mean, I just I love that canopy, the bark, the, tr the leaves, everything about it. They're also beautiful landscaping trees. Um, like you said, and these right here are hackberry. If you're not an expert, don't know anything about trees, you may think, hey, this is a Kentucky coffee. No, these are hackberries. Very distinct bark, really nothing else like that. There really isn't any tree in the world that's like a hackberry. <laughs> I, I don't believe. But yeah, I just think that's so cool that you just find them growing along uh, the edge of the creek. But they can also take super dry soils. I mean, they can tolerate a wide range of conditions. Um, and really no other tree like it. Hope you guys found this video interesting. Um, but also let you know it is hardy in USDA zones 4 through 9. Uh, native through a good chunk of the eastern U.S. But like I said, hundreds of thousands or millions of years ago, it was much more abundant throughout the forests everywhere. It was a, because it was dispersed. Uh, I, larger animals could digest the seeds, like woolly mammoths, uh, uh, large ground sloths, whatever they were called. You know, a lot of those, but they were all died out the last ice age. But then the trees obviously didn't die out. They just became significantly reduced in populations and they just lost their status as a dominant tree, but still continue to thrive where conditions favor. Hope you all found this video interesting. Please leave a comment uh, down below if you guys have any questions or concerns. I will get back with you, but please keep all comments respectful or they will be removed. This is Nature Man signing off. Bye.